Okay, so this evening's session then, at Good Evening All, is our part two of Lights, Shapes and Sounds, part one, available on the YouTube channel, um, dealt with some of the basic lights and shapes and sounds, and now we're going to look at some of the more obscure lights, shapes and sounds. For those of you who don't know, um, I'm Kath Scott, I'm the Chief Instructor here at Compass Sea School, I'm a Yacht Master Instructor Power, Advanced Power Boat Instructor, and I also teach Shore Based Syllabus, I'm also a Life Boat Trainer SSS, so I, um, I'm, I'm doing this fairly, fairly often and hopefully what I can bring to the party is some cool ways of remembering things because some of them aren't quite as obvious as you would like to think. Okay, so what are the objectives for tonight? We're going to be taking a quick review of our basic vessel lights and day shapes and our Rule 18 hierarchy. We went through that on our last session, so we'll just do a very quick run through from that. And we're going to talk about the difference between vessels being underway and making way. This is one of the things that tends to get most of my Yacht Master students a little bit fuddled. Um, <clears throat> when is a vessel underway? When is it making way? I've got a fairly simple graphic that will show you that. Um, for those of you um, who may well be instructors as well, most of the graphics that I have will be available on the internet. Um, then, then some of them we've created ourselves but some of them you should be able to find yourselves we'll talk about anchored vessels because that was the one thing we didn't do on tuesday we'll talk about vessels who have run themselves aground a little bit about towing and pushing um, and then underwater operations and mine sweeping and also our air cushion vessels okay so this should start to give you a clue here as to the kind of vessels that we are looking at okay the one thing that i did say on tuesday was that once you move away from those simple navigation lights and a mast headlight we are basically into lessons that lights that mean something so the more lights something has the bigger it tends to be okay and the more work it is doing and the more lights it has is also indicating usually whether you should be passing it or not okay so um if it looks like it's lit up like a christmas tree then give it a big wide berth okay so let's kick off with a quick reso resume of our rule 18 okay so the mnemonic that i gave you was no rule call for sale powered seaplanes and if you look down the left hand side here each one of these letters so n r c f s p s so no real call for sale powered seaplanes. <clears throat> this was the hierarchy of normal visibility where we're expecting the vessels at the top of the tree here, they're not under command vessels, so unable to comply with the regulations or the vessels that everybody's going to give way to, the least maneuverable, moving all the way down through ram, through constrained by draft, through fishing and trolling commercially, sailing power boats and then seaplanes at the bottom. So it's all to do with maneuverability, okay? We dealt with some of the day shapes and we said the shapes are really made up of either circles, diamonds, um, squares, or cones you can see most of the one here and really we just start putting them together to make different kinds of shapes okay and then with these lights we talked very much about the uh, navigation lights <coughs> the mast headlights we talked about the arcs for those as well and then these lights here where we're talking about all round lights okay so that was our rule 18 and the basics that we did um we also talked from our sound signals who needs to carry what and we were saying that anything under 12 meters just needs an efficient an effective sound signal okay that doesn't mean you standing on deck going harp okay that means something like an air horn or one of these which i said are great once we get slightly bigger then we need to have a ship's whistle so anything over 12 meters needs to have a ship's whistle the bigger you go the more you need to carry so once you're between 20 and 100 you're uh, you needing to have a whistle and a bell <clears throat> okay but also uh, once you're over 100 meters you need a whistle a bell and a gong and if you can remember this bit that will come in very handy later when we start talking about the vessel signals for being a ground okay so that's anchor and a ground so let's kick off with underway and making way okay so when is a vessel underway well when it's not at anchor it's not made fast to the shore and it's not a ground okay so technically it's not attached to anything it's not attached at anchor to the seabed made fast to the shore alongside or a ground attached to the big sandbank rock whatever has run it to ground okay so it is technically deemed as soon as you slip your lines you are then deemed to be underway okay you're making way then when you're being propelled through the water by either your sails your machinery or your oars you are physically propelling yourself through the water okay but we only really need to worry about it when we're dealing with vessels that have any of these lights so we've got our vessel aground here on the left 
our restricted inability to manoeuvre and we've got our fishing, remember fish frying tonight, hot fish, red, and our trawling green, okay? So if, if you are seeing any of the, the lights above, <clears throat> then we are interested whether they are making way or not making way through the water. Why? Because I could be aground, I could be drifting, I'm not attached to the shore, I'm not an anchor, you know, <clears throat> I'm, so I'm not under command, I'm not attached to the shore, but actually I am drifting, but I am not making way through the water because I'm not being propelled. So if I'm showing any of these lights and I have my navigation lights on, then yes, I am making way. If not, I am not making way, okay? I am just underway and not making way. If the vessel isn't showing, isn't showing any of the lights above, we just simply deem it to be underway or not underway, okay? So if I was to see a vessel that could be restricting its ability to maneuver, maybe it was a dive boat doing some drift diving, something, and it wasn't propelling itself through the water, I would expect to see the restricting ability to maneuver lights, but no navigation lights, okay? <clears throat> so, Let's start with our vessels at anchor. So if I am at anchor, I am not underway. And we'll start with the simple ones. Smaller vessels, by day, I'm going to hoist my anchor ball. And by night, I'm going to have one all round white light. Okay, this is for vessels under 50 meters in length. <clears throat> now, if I go bigger by day, does it really matter? No, not really, because if it's by day, you can see me. So I still just need to hoist one anchor ball, even though here I am now a vessel over 50 meters in length. But it does matter at night, so I need to start adding some additional white lights. Remember, these are all round white lights. And what you'll see is they're almost the opposite of the masthead lights, where normally the masthead lights, the rearward masthead light is the highest, the forward is the lowest. In this particular instance, my forward anchor light is the highest and my rearward anchor light is the lowest okay so this is vessels over 50 meters what happens if i go even bigger well this vessel is over 100 meters in length and i join the dots between the two anchored lights okay and this is to signify that it would be showing its deck lights because if it didn't join the dots it would be effectively one boat to anchor and another boat to anchor okay and if you try to go through the middle that's not going to work so well is it okay so for a vessel over 100 meters in length <clears throat> what i'm going to do is i'm just going to join the dots and i'm going to put my deck lights on okay so what happens then if i'm in restricted visibility what are the sound signals that i want to start making well this depends on how big i am okay remember if i'm between 12 and 100 meters so 20 and 100 meters i have to have a bell i would be rapidly ringing my bell for five seconds at the intervals not more than one minute okay so I would have, in the old days, it did used to be someone with a stopwatch and a bell. Now we've actually got more automatic, but we've got vessels that are going to be ringing it rapidly saying ding, 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 for five seconds at intervals, not more than one minute. Why? Because I want to know that there is a vessel at anchor in restricted visibility. You need to tell me that you're there. Once we start getting bigger, and if we're over a hundred meters, then we've got a bell in the fore part of the vessel and we've got a gong in the after part of the vessel okay so now we're going to be ringing our bell for five seconds and our gong for five seconds so let me just see if i can play you this one no sound coming out all right okay all righty so that's oh that's disappointing okay so if I have my bell in the four part, then I'm going to have rapid ringing for five seconds, immediately followed by the gong in the after part of the vessel. Why? Well, that tells me where the front is and where the back is as well. OK, now, if I'm at anchor and I am worried about the possibility of a collision, then I can sound one short, one long and one short. OK, so one short blast. Remember, one to two seconds, one long, four to six and then one short, so one short, one long, and one short. And if you hear that, that is somebody saying, I think we are on a collision course, okay? Let me just pop someone in there, okay. So that's our vessel at anchor then, all right? Let's have a look then, to talk about our restricted visibility. 
Um, if we're talking about our sound signals and we're just a power driven vessel, if we are making way, so if we are into way of making way, we have one long blast, okay? One long blast intervals, not more than two minutes, okay? If you're a smallish vessel, that is you with your air horn, perhaps and your stopwatch, um, but if I am stopped and not making way through the water, I change that one long blast into two long blasts around about two seconds apart. Okay. Well, what happens if I am everybody else? And this is where, thankfully, it's about the only bit of restricted visibility that is easier. If I am everybody else, so not in command, constrained by draft, sailing, ram, fishing, towing, pushing, I sound one long followed by two short. Okay, because remember also in restrictive visibility that if we uh, encounter a vessel by radar alone, then we are going to all be the giveaway vessels. Okay, so in restrictive visibility, we're looking at everybody being the giveaway vessel. So I just need to differentiate between my power vessels here, one long blast if I'm making way, two long blasts if I'm stopped, and everybody else is going to be one long followed by two short. Okay. So dredging and underwater operations then, this is where we're moving from just being restricted in our ability to maneuver to actually showing a safe side and a foul side. So by night, we're going to show red, white, red for restricted and ability to maneuver. And we're gonna have two vertical reds to notify you of the foul side to pass and two vertical greens to notify you of the safe side to pass. Okay, so in this instance, this is the stern aspect of this vessel. This is the bow aspect of this vessel. So the safe side to pass is down the port side. And remember that would normally be a red light, okay? So here we can see what happens when we put our underwater operations along our navigation lights as well. And it starts to get quite busy quite quickly. Remember what I said, if it's lit up like a Christmas tree, go run away, okay? So in this instance, we've turned our navigation lights on. So we've got our port light and our starboard light. And in this particular instance, this vessel is over 50 meters in length. So showing two mast headlights. But remember the mast headlights and the side lights and the navigation lights are all sectored. All of these other these lights are all around lights. So from the stern, we will see his stern light, but we will also see all of the lights that indicate what he is doing and which is the safe side and which is the foul side to pass, okay? So by day then, we use our balls and we use our diamonds. Diamonds are a girl's best friend, so we're going to pass on the side with the diamonds and balls, think of it as two stop signs, okay? So that's where we have dredging or underwater operations and the uh, skipper is giving us an idea of the safe side to pass. Let's have a look. So it could be that we have a diving vessel. So similar at night, if it's a diving vessel, we've got restricted inability to maneuver. Particularly this is if it's not anchored, but it may be just doing a drift dive. It might have divers attached. It could have divers on umbilicals, it could have all sorts of things. But so by night, we would perhaps see restricted inability to maneuver. But by day, we will see either of these flags. This is the most common flag in the UK. This one a little bit more popular in um, America. But the blue swallowtail flag would give you divers down. Well, so what, okay? Well, what it means to you is navigate with caution because there will be divers in the water. They may not be right by the vessel. They may have been navigating. They may come up. So navigate with caution and look for bubbles in the water. OK, that's our diving vessels. Here we have our air cushion vessels operating in non-displacement mode. OK, so you could have something a little bit like this. OK. So if it's operating in non-displacement mode, we have our normal navigation lights. So in this instance, we've got quite a large air cushion vessel. So we've got the I am over 50 meters in length lights. There's my mast headlights. Here I'm actually looking at the port side, not the starboard side. Change that. Okay. But I also have a yellow flashing light. Okay, so I have a yellow flashing light, rapid yellow flashing light, and that's going to be operating when I'm operating in non-displacement mode. Okay, and I should see it from all around the vessel. So from the stern, I have my stern light, but also I see the yellow flashing light. And from the front here, I've got my two mast headlights, and I've also got my yellow flashing light. Okay, so this is an all round light. And what you can see here, just if you can make them out, are the little sectors. Okay, so that's my air cushion vessel. It could be a small one, in which case it would simply just have one mast headlight. Okay, once it goes over 50 meters in length, we start to add in another white light. Okay, 
So that's our air cushion vessels. Here we've got our vessel engaged in pilot duties. So one of the ways I always remember this is the pilot has to get off the pilot boat onto the other vessel, climb up the ladder, wander over to the, uh, to the bridge. And by the time he's got there, he's quite red in the face. So I would always remind myself that it's a white hat. Pilots would wear white hats and red faces. Okay. So he has his normal navigation lights on, but in this instance, he has his uh, engaged in pilot duties light and we can see the white and the red all the way around the vessel. When we see a vessel with a pilot on board, we'll see that it will actually fly code flag H. And if we're looking at the sound signal in restricted visibility, we are looking at the sound signal for a power driven vessel underway, which is one long blast. And then there's an additional sound for short blast to give you an idea that the, the, the vessel is engaged in pilot duties. Why is that important? Because if it's engaged in pilot duties, it's probably very close to another vessel because it will be landing or collecting its pilot. Okay. So as soon as you see anything with white hat, red face, white over red, um, we're looking at a vessel that is on pilot duties, heading out either to take a pilot or to go collect a pilot. So it could be on its way out or on its way in. Okay. So in the unlikely event that you manage to run your vessel aground then, okay, we're going to start small. So we're going to start with, this is a vessel here aground, and these are lights that you've already seen. So we've already seen two red lights. We had two red lights for not under command. We've also seen these two white lights with a higher white and a lower white, and that was a vessel to, at anchor over 50 metres. So technically, this vessel is not under command at anchor. It's got to give you some way of saying, remember you are underway unless you are at anchor, aground or fast to the shore. So the white lights are telling you that it is at anchor. So it's actually attached to something. The red lights are telling you that the vessel is aground. So it's not under command at anchor is the way that I remember it. By day then, it would be hoisting three balls. And if it was a very large vessel over 100 metres, again, it would be showing us its deck lights to connect the forward light to the rearward light. Okay. Otherwise, you'd think that there's a vessel here, <clears throat> a small vessel aground, and then possibly a vessel at anchor, and you might even think that you could nip between the two. Okay. So what happens then if I'm in um, a ground in restricted visibility? Well, this is really where the fun starts with the sound signal. So it's a shame I can't play them to you tonight. I might just have to sing them to you, I suppose. But if I'm going to be a ground, then I have to stand the bell and the gong as a vessel at anchor. So whatever I would have done at anchor, but I put three distinct strokes before and after the rapid ringing. Okay. So I would go ding, ding, ding. There's my three distinct strokes. Then I would do the rapid ringing for five seconds. Then there would be three more distinct strokes. And then if I was over 100 meters, there would be the gong as well. Okay, so it's exactly the same as the sound signal for at anchor, but the additional three distinct strokes. Okay. If I am under 20 meters, but over 12 meters, I'm not obliged to make any bell sounds because I'm not obliged to carry a bell, but I would need to make an efficient sound signals at interval of not more than two minutes just to warn people of my position. Okay. So now towing, we're gonna start with a little tow. Okay, so to start with a little toe under 200 meters, and this is where we distinct, we have a differentiation between a toe under 200 meters or a tow over 200 meters. So this is my tugboat, okay? And what have I added? Well, what are the normal lights? It's a vessel over 50 meters. So I've got my mast headlight here, which is sectored, and I've got a lower mast headlight here. And my stern light is normal, and my port and starboard lights are normal. So what have I added? I've added an additional white light here on top of my forward mast headlight. And I've added a yellow towing light on my stern. So when I put this together, this is a little tug with a little tow. He's added an additional white light here to tug under 50 meters with a tow less than 200 meters. But interestingly, what's happened to the vessel being towed, the vessel being towed now is behaving like a sailing vessel. 
because it's not propelling itself through the water, it won't have any steaming lights on, it won't have its masthead lights on. So the towed vessel just has its navigation lights, okay? No masthead lights. Maybe I have a slightly bigger tug. I've still got a small tow, but a slightly bigger tug. And this is where I have my normal masthead lights, my additional towing light, and you can see my port light here and the port light on the tow. So when I look at this, again, a game of catch race, see what you see. I am looking at the port aspect of a power driven vessel over 50 meters in length, towing with a length of tow less than 200 meters. This is what all the different views would look like. Then let's start with the one from the stern. So from the stern, I would see the yellow light and the white light. I might just see the other white light of the towed vessel, okay? <clears throat> from the forward, I will see the mast headlights of the tug. And this indicates that I've got my side lights here if I'm the tug, and then I've got my navigation lights of the towed vessel, okay? So you can see effectively I'm towing what looks like a sailing boat because it's just got its navigation lights. So all I've done when I've added a tow on this instance is added an additional masthead light and I've added my yellow light on the stern there. By day, there aren't any special characteristics. There's no special day shapes because by day for a tow under 200 meters, we're probably likely to see the tow line between the two vessels um, and we would see them both moving at the same um, speed together. So there's no particular symbols for a daytime tow under 200 meters. Let's lengthen the tow then, shall we? Okay, so let's look at over 200 meters. So once we go to over 200 meters, I start to add in an additional mast headlight. Okay, so here I am looking at a tug, which has got three lights in a row. So it is a tug under 50 meters in length, with two additional white lights, which tells me it's a tow over 200 meters. And again, the vessel I'm towing just has its navigation lights on. So here I am, tugboat under 50 meters. I've now got three white lights <clears throat> to give you an idea that I've got a long tow. So little tug, big tow, okay? Big tug, big tow. What have I added? Well, I've still got my same three white lights here that say I am a power driven vessel towing over 200 meters, but now I'm a power driven vessel over 50 meters in length. So little tug, big tow, big tug, big tow. By day then, I will actually start to see diamonds being hoisted on both the towed vessel and the tug to give you an idea that it's over 200 meters in length. And by night, this is what I would be looking at from the forward aspect. So I would see four white lights in a line from the forward because they'd all be on the center line of the vessel. And I would see the navigation lights of the tug and the navigation lights of the towed vessel. By night, I would see the stern light of the towed vessel and I would see my yellow over white. This isn't a flashing yellow like we had on our um, uh, hovercraft. This is a fixed yellow. Okay, and again, it's sectored, so I'm only going to see it from the stern. And just when he thought towing couldn't get any worse, okay, there's still more to come, I'm afraid. So when I've got my sound signals for a towed vessel in restricted visibility, this forward tug will sound one long and two short, which is the sound signal for everybody other than a power vessel. The tug, or the towed vessel, sorry, will sound one long and three short. And this will be the last vessel in the tow. So if there were multiple boats being towed, the last vessel in the tow would be sounding one long and three short. That tells me that I can find the tug because I can hear the tug with one long and two short. And I will hear one long and three short to give me an idea that I've got where the end of the tow is. Instead of towing, uh, a stern, I could be towing alongside or I could be pushing ahead and similar rules apply. Okay? So here I've got a vessel, to, uh, a vessel pushing and what I've done is added an additional white light. Okay? But here you'll see that there's no yellow light because all of the vessels are in front of me. If I'm towing alongside, again, I've got the two white lights to say that I am towing. So my normal masthead light plus an additional one. And I've got my vessels towed alongside. In this case, they've got their navigation lights and their stern lights. So what does it look like? This is what my pushing ahead would look like from the front. 
got my tow vessel here and I've got my three vessels that it's pushing. From the stern, you will only see one stern light. And from the side, I see little tug pushing, okay? Over here then, when I've got them towed alongside, these would all, in theory, they're being towed, so they'll all be moving together. I've got my tug vessel, which has got one additional light, plus all the navigation lights on my other vessels. Where we're towing alongside, you'll see that they also have their stern lights on. Okay. Vessels operating mine clearance operations. This is the one that people tend to remember. I'm not sure why, but if I'm looking at a vessel doing mine clearance operations, then I have to show my day shape, which is three balls. And these are visible, you can see them here, throughout from all the way around 360 degrees around the vessel. I also at night, in addition to my normal navigation lights, show three green all round lights. Okay, so if you look at this vessel here that's coming towards you, you've got the navigation lights, you've got your port light, your starboard light, you've got your two mast headlights, this is over 50 meters in length, and you have your additional lights. So when I said to you, build them up simply, start with it as a power driven vessel, because I've got a steaming light here, mast headlight, it is underway, I've got my navigation lights, it is a over 50 meters in length, and it is busy, doing mine clearance operations, okay. The one important thing with this is you have to, once it has its mine clearance operations lights or shapes up, you are obliged to maintain a distance of 1,000 meters of the mine clearance vessel, okay. It's dangerous for you to approach within 1,000 meters. So this would be handy if it's on AIS and perhaps you can stick a, a cursor onto it on AIS and work out the distance, or perhaps you could use your radar to work out how far away you are and not encroach into 1,000 meters of that mine clearance vessel. Okay. So here we have your quick quiz for the evening. So let me just. Okay. So having had a little time to have a look at all 12. Let's see how we did then. So number one, we're looking at a tow with a length over 200 meters. Okay, it's by day, so we're only going to see the towing diamonds when it's a tow over 200 meters. For one long blast in restricted visibility, this is going to be a power-driven vessel underway and making way at intervals of not more than two minutes. Number three then, we've got our vessel aground. Remember I said not under command at anchor. We've got our vessel aground and we're looking at the port aspect of that boat. So we've got the higher light here, the lower light there. <clears throat> this one, a little flashing light, we've got our air cushion vessel operating in non-displacement mode and we're looking at it being less than 50 meters because there is only one uh, masthead light and we're seeing its starboard aspect. This one, our vessel engaged in pilot operations, seen from ahead, we've got our navigation lights here, so the boat's coming towards you. I remember white hats and red faces. The restricted visibility then for the sound signal, one long blast, so four to six seconds, followed by three short blasts. We're looking at being the last vessel in the tow. If it was the tug, it would be one long and two short. This one was probably the easiest one on the board, I suspect. This is just a vessel at anchor. Okay, so one single anchor ball visible from all, way, uh, all the way around the vessel. This one here, we have a vessel engaged in underwater operations. So we've got our restricted inability to maneuver lights here. We've got two reds and two greens. So we've got a foul side to pass. We're looking at the stern of this vessel. So our safe side is to the port. Our vessels towing here give us a stern aspect. Okay, do we know how long the tow is? No. Do we know what size the tow is? No, because all of those lights would be forward looking lights. They would be um, the masthead lights. What we can say is that there are vessels towing and the yellow over the blue gives us the clue. For this one then, we've got our vessel at anchor and we're looking at the port aspect. For our <coughs> rapid ringing, so we've got three distinct strokes on the bell five seconds of rapid ringing, three distinct strokes, three distinct strokes on the belt. We're looking at a vessel under 100 meters aground. And then our vessel engaged in mine clearance operations with our three all round greens. <clears throat> and we're also seeing the stern aspect. 
Okay, so how did we do? Pop your answers, uh, how, pop your scores into the chat for me, please. Let's have a look at the Zoom recording then. So next session that we've got is our weather workshop on Saturday. I think there's a couple of you that are on the session tonight that are signed up for that. Um, we haven't made a decision on our workshops for next week, um, but we'd like um, as many of you to come along as possible. Thank you for listening this evening. Let me just 